Ciao Jewelry Making Friends. My name is Joey Balistrieri. Welcome to my channel and to my work table. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, you're jumping into the middle of a project, sort of, but it's almost a continuation of my last video because I was showing how I do these little bird's nests and I did this bracelet in my last video and then I already had all of the beads and even some of the components like this little check glass melon bead that did not get used in this project were already started and all of my beads from this month's bargain bead box were already out plus I changed up the color a little bit by adding in some pink instead of the coral and kind of peachy tones that were in the box. I love those too but I'm a pink girl and I just really wanted to do this. So before I jump into the deliciousness that is on my work table today, I just have to say, I often say that I don't know how a person who makes jewelry can live without getting the bargain bead box every month. But there's another company that if you make jewelry, I don't know how you can live without that either. And that is the Softflex company. I love their products and I do try to be present every week when they have their live streams. And I see so many people that are viewers of my channel and I've become friends with other YouTubers that make jewelry and we get to say hello to each other. And the ladies at so ladies and gentlemen at Softflex are absolutely the epitome of loveliness. And they really just have a beautiful community, but their products are amazing. They have an entire section of wire and I use their, their craft wire I am using it in this project as well I'm using the 20 gauge uh, the copper and they have the non-tarnish coating on it so it is fabulous and they are so generous every week they do a giveaway on their at the end of their live stream and I do try to be present and I never win anything but last week I won the giveaway and I was just so excited I mean just anything that comes from Softflex company is going to make me happy but they almost immediately mailed it out and I received it today this little package and it has made my whole day and I just thought I would show you I got my favorite beading wire this is my favorite I just can't live without this it's the 49 strand medium 26 pound strength and I got the white quartz which is so perfect for the spring and summer coming up and I just love getting I just love getting it it just made me so happy and this little package had a couple of these little bead stoppers which I have some in white but these are so nice they put those in and there were some square rondelle spacers some uh, for you there's a funny word for them I forget what it's called and oh my goodness look at this check glass shank button and what I was just dying over are these pink ceramic fish I mean could this be any more perfect for a jewelry maker who lives in Florida and loves pink <laughs> I mean oh my goodness thank you thank you thank you soft flex company I like this made my entire day and then I just love what is in this bag I mean everything is just screams me look at these beautiful little tile little two hole tile beads and pinch beads this gorgeous crystal pinch beads I mean I use this kind of thing regularly and then one of my favorite things in the world is the Mille Fiori beads where the little um, flower beads are in kind of inside and if you've been on my channel at all you know that when I travel to Italy that is one of the things I shop for and bring back and they're made in other places as well but the Italian ones are so beautiful but look how stunning these are they're little coins little small coins Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, Softflex Company. You guys are amazing. Keep doing what you do and making what you make because we jewelry designers need you. And I like this is this is the best thing. It's the best thing. Like like I said, they have craft wire, and I'm using that today in my project as well. But they are just amazing. And I just had to share that because I literally just got the mail and it was there and, you know, I was already working. But anyway, let's jump in to what is on my mat. So I have um, these little beads out here that were from the box that I just loved. I love the faceting and the really unusual shape on those. And I had just pulled out from my stash 
let me just let you peek in my dish just some little copper leaf beads and some little daisy spacers and just some things that i think i might be using and then here is this poor little golem bead that was ousted from my bracelet project. I actually had done most of the project with this bead on this bracelet and then just decided it was too big for me and I just didn't like the way it was landing here on my arm. So I actually really thought that I was going to place it in this necklace project but I have decided it's not making its way into this necklace either so it will go back in my stash for another project I love it and it's beautiful and the colors went really well with the seafoam sunrise theme of this month's bargain bead box but it's not going to make its way in <laughs> and then I have my little dish here with these eight millimeter amazonite beads and then what you'll see in my project is that I have pulled in some elements from from my own stash but almost everything that you are seeing that I have added in is from the sister website to bargain bead box it's called bead box bargains and if you subscribe to the bargain bead box and receive it every month you will get a 30% off coupon code that you are allowed to use over and over as many times as you want on the website to add in supplemental things. They even have companion bundles to their boxes each month that you can get. Um, and you can still shop the website if you are not a subscriber, but you just don't get the 30% off. And it is such a, it's just such a great deal. And my thing that I say is, I don't know how you can make jewelry and live without <laughs> getting the bargain bead box every month. It is so fabulous. So I have gone into my stash and this little melon bead is from the website these little check glass tulip beads these little five petal flower beads are from the website and these little copper flower spacers are from the website and i've just gone into my stash and i have created a very beautiful beaded chain you know if you go to buy a beaded chain that is ready made you are never going to find one that's this interesting and bright and beautiful and even the chain part is so simple I have used 20 gauge wire and made a whole bunch of my own jump rings and connected them in lengths of three and then on the middle length of each one I connected a second jump ring to give a little bit of dimension and so it's really just creating a beaded chain with kind of bead stations so where there's a bead station a chain a bead station more chain and it just goes like that and that is going to be one side of this necklace and I just have to duplicate this on the other side and this is the bird's nest that I have already made and so again if you are interested in how I do these bird's nest it's a very old jewelry element but everybody has their own little twist and turn to what they do um, I can link the video below where I actually show all the steps for getting it to this point and I have left the wire that I had left over from this nest here because I if my plan is to go ahead and do a really nice chunky bale and then attach it to the beaded chain that I am making. So, um, you know, I kind of left that to do with you. And I also had just found these little leaves that really work well with the Amazonite and with these little minty faceted gumdrop looking beads that were in the box. So they may find their way in as an embellishment at the end. I really like the way that they look. And I had this beautiful little ceramic bird. I believe I've had this bird for about 15 years. I have another one. I cannot remember where I got them, but this little guy could not be more perfect for this nest and this whole project. But the only thing is I did the entire piece in copper and this has a little silver loop that's already embedded in the bird and that bothers me. <laughs> so I have taken a jump ring and thread some little aqua seed beads onto the jump ring and i'm going to do a second one and that is my plan to kind of cover this ring but then still be able to attach it to this drop from the bird's nest so i'm going to show you how i did that and i have everything that i need over here to complete 
the beaded chain for the second side of the necklace and as I was working out my length and my pattern on the chain I saw that I was going to have two of my pink beads left over so I have a little earring design for a little bonus project at the end <laughs> so this is the plan with this pretty much everything you see here is 20 gauge wire so I'm going to start like at the bottom of my pendant here and just show you what I did I took just an antique copper jump ring from my stash move some tools out of the way and in order to get the seed beads on there you have to open it fairly wide and then I just have some little seed beads and you just have to be patient you could go down in size if you wanted to get more beads on the ring but I was able to get six and I won't lie it you have to be patient and finesse this a little bit to get the beads strung on and get them as you see to stay on you have to like keep scooting them down and hold them you know hold them so that they don't fall back off until you can get the jump ring closed but it's a really gorgeous technique i really love the way it looks it's just you know i actually thought to be honest i thought about making one of these jump rings for a link on my handmade beaded chain but then i decided <laughs> that i was kind of happy with the way it was turning out because i have quite a few different beads incorporated into the beaded chain this time. Okay. And so I have my six little beads on there. And now I am going to just put this over that little loop on my bird and so it's going to be a little bit challenging I really want the two of them stacked on him so what I'm going to do is open this component here I used one of the anti copper head pins from the box for just this bead just because I have anti copper little spacers crystal rondelle spacers and these little um, flower spacers were anti copper so I just wanted to intersperse the darker copper in my design so let me see if I'm going to be able to get this inside both of those jump rings I wanted to on there I may not be able to get two on there but I'm going to try now I have it on there so if I can just close it just get that loop closed under there we go I got it <laughs> like I said when you if you really want it <laughs> you'll make it happen so I have my little I have my little bird hanging and that's going to be the very bottom of my drop on this necklace and from here I'm just going to work my way up and connect So it's almost like a mini Y necklace, um, but it's really not as exaggerated as a Y necklace. It just has this drop. And so let me show you the bird's nest. I took one of these little pieces of wire and just pulled it out with my pliers. So I have this nice little space there that I can attach my, my drop. But before I do that, I'm going to work out how this is going to be a bale and what I think I'm going to do is the same technique that I showed when I made this where I did a wire wrapped loop with the exact wire that was coming off of this bird's nest but to make it thicker I wrapped down and back up toward the loop and I'm going to try that again so if it doesn't work if I don't like the way it looks then I have a plan B we got a little bonus item in this month's bargain bead box it was this little antique copper pinch bale and that could very easily work 
as a bale for any of these birds nests because there's a lot of little places for the tooth in this to grab onto. So if you don't want to do it this way, that is an idea. And so the thing is, I think it's going to look good because I had crinkled all of this wire for the nest and then I didn't need it all for the nest. So I think it's going to make a pretty little bale, but if it doesn't, you know, I'll do something else with it. And I'm going to do just a normal wire wrapped loop, but I am going to do a double because I have plenty of wire here and because this is a, a larger scale bird's nest, I'm going to try to get a second loop in there. So they're a little tricky. You just have to move, keep rotating the barrel of your pliers and you know get that second barrel out of your way. And again, I had already twisted this wire, so it's a little bit, you know, it's <laughs> not straight, but I think that's going to add to the overall look of the design. And I just wanted to make it a little bit thicker. So I hope you can see, I have such a tail here that I'm pulling out of the camera, but can you see that I got like double loops in there and now this is coming over? just like normal and so now just you know grab a hold of it and do the normal wraps that we would do and like I said I want to make it a little thicker and a little bit more substantial so that it looks good with my bird's nest so I'm I've wrapped all the way down to the nest it's so twisty I don't know if you can see but then I'm going to wrap back up to the loop and you know it's a like a messy wrap but yeah, it, that really looks good. And so I had a little tail of wire that I made a curly cue out of, and I wouldn't advise doing that for a bracelet bird's nest because you will likely catch it on your clothing. But on a pendant, you know, it's not sharp um, and it hangs in front of you. So I think it's a lovely little, little technique. So I can do another one of those on this side if I like, or I could play with these little these leaves are quite small and I have kinks in this wire so they may not go down um, but if I trim it I have to decide what I want to do if I want to do a curly cue and have another one or if I want the leaf and I think I prefer the leaf and I'm going to try something that's kind of unusual I'm going to trim this like right there I am just guessing it has kinks in it from when I made the bird's nest. <laughs> Let me just see if I can straighten it and give it a go. If this will feed down, you have to be really careful not to break this. And then what I'm thinking is to just almost do like a simple loop just bend this wire around the leaf and poke it inside my nest. I've never done this before but I just thought I would give it a try and see how it looks because I wanted the leaf to kind of stand up from the nest and I do like it but I'm going to try to make this a little bit thinner here just a little bit closer to the leaf. And I do like that. Let me just go on the back because I can see my cut end. So I'm just going to go on the back and just bend that around and kind of hide it in my nest and make sure that nothing sharp is sticking out. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That turned out great. I've never done that before, but you can try it if you have some some little leaves that you want to add. And then I may come like over here where I have a little space with a jump ring and put another little leaf that's dangling. I'll do those embellishments at the end. But my little nest is ready to go and I think I will actually use a jump ring to attach and I'm going to use one of those darker ones 
and let's see in fact I think I will do a double jump ring there just to kind of repeat the design that is going on in my beaded chain so as I said before I'm just adding in some of the antiqued copper in with my bright copper just for consistency because a few of my elements in my beaded chain and in my piece are the darker copper. Just get that second jump ring in there. It's something that I do sometimes. Um, it just adds a little design element, a little dimension. That looks lovely. And so, you know, you have that little darker, little darker spacer, the darker copper crystal rondelle spacer. I love this little drop. That is looking great. And so now I have to just duplicate my beaded chain. And I realize, you know, that I'm notorious for making long necklaces and they are difficult to see on the work surface but at the end i'll make sure that i put up some pictures so in order to finish this side i am going to have to make some more jump rings so i just have a little piece of that 20 gauge non-tarnish copper wire and i'm using this bale making plier this is one of my favorite pliers for making jump rings it has two sizes on the mandrels here that are just really useful and i'm using the larger size and i believe this is an eight millimeter jump ring because of course you don't have to make your own right you can you know do this a lot faster if you just use jump rings that you know are already made but i love making my own jump rings because as you can see this wire here matches the same wire that i used in my nest it's anti-tarnish and honestly sometimes i get better circles and better finished ends when i make them myself than the commercially made ones that are mass produced so i just really like to do it and it's not expensive you know the wire craft wire is not expensive and it's long lasting because of the coating on it so and then another bonus if i choose a magnetic clasp the coating on this prevents the magnets from grabbing the jump rings and grabbing this this wire so this is just a simple coiling motion like that and i don't know if you can see that little tail a lot of times let me get my nylon jaw pliers a lot of times i take the an extra moment to just um, make sure that tail is wrapped down just like that because sometimes you don't know until you cut but sometimes that gives you a whole nother jump ring just for having taken a minute to do that and then you just slide that little coil off the plier and start where you find your little cut find your little cut where you started and use the flush side of your cutters and then just cut straight up doing one ring at a time my cutter just did two but I don't try to do two I try to just do as straight of a line as I can get it and just cut right down the middle with that flush side of the cutter And so when I decided that I wanted to make a chain for this bird's nest, I went into my stash and I pulled out four different possibilities of chain that I had, but honestly, I didn't like any of them. And that's what made me say, you know, I can just make my own chain. <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> and so I'm, I may even have to make more, but if I wanted to say, if, you have basic jewelry skills you can totally do this project 
The bird's nest is a little tricky because you're working with wire, but it's extremely forgiving and there's no right or wrong. The way your nest comes out is the way your nest comes out. So I actually do classify this as a beginner project. And the rest of this is all simple loops. And if you can open and close a jump ring, there that is these are like the most basic jewelry making skills. And so if you like this project, I encourage you to give it a go because it doesn't take a lot of skill, honestly, to do it. The way that I started is I have, I did three lengths of my jump rings. So just connecting three of them and just make sure that it's closed really well and that it's a perfect circle and that you know nothing is sharp and it's that simple and when I had the three links completely done I actually waited until they were all connected on the chain that is when I went back and added that that um, second <laughs> link to the middle link you, it doesn't matter if you do it at the end or now. So if you want to do it now, you totally can. Just take one of those jump rings and connect it beside the middle one. So you get a link that looks, I'll try to show you, a link that looks like that. And so I'm just going to duplicate this all the way up. This is simple connecting. I've already done a few of these components and I have a couple more to make and I will show you a couple of them in case you wanna go along with my pattern. But it's you're just going to build a beaded chain in sections like that. The next section on this was one of my little check glass melon beads from my stash and just simply connected that. And so I'm just copying the pattern. Both sides of this necklace will be the same side. This will be the same. Both sides of this necklace will be the same. So I need to make another one of these components because that is pretty much what I did all the way up. So all that is is a piece of that same 20 gauge wire that I made the bird's nest out of and the chain and I am using my two and a quarter millimeter one step looper and I'm just going to put that wire in there and close it. It cuts a little end off and I like to bend that wire and just warm it and straighten it with my hand and check to make sure that my loop is centered and I get a perfect loop with that. And then all I did is feed on one of these little minty gumdrop beads, one of my own little antique copper spacers, and then another one of those minty beads. And I did it with the two flat sides facing each other. And then I do my loops opposite directions. So I'll have this one going downward and I'll do this one going up. Don't ask me why. I've heard other jewelry people say all your loops need to be going in the same direction. I think that is your personal preference. And so I just like back the bead like a millimeter off of that jaw and close it very slowly so that I have control as it's closing, I pull my beads down. And then I can see that I have also centered and I get perfect, perfect loops. Now like this one didn't close all the way, but that is the whole point of a simple loop is because you're generally making that because you plan to open and close it. And so I can attach it to the rest of my beaded chain, work hard in a little bit by opening and closing my pliers, do this end as well. And then I'm going to repeat what I did here, which is another three sections of chain. But before I do that, let me show you my other components. I'll make the rest of them with you just so you can, if it helps you, kind of see what my pattern is and what I came up with. You know, you may want to do your own or maybe you like mine, but this way you'll see what I did. So I just got that simple loop in there and this component is one of my own little check glass tulip beads. Um, well, I'm going backwards, sorry. 
facing forward. I don't remember when I got these tulip beads, but they are also from Bead Box Bargains. And then one of these little copper crystal rondelle spacers. So the base of that tulip sits right in that spacer. And then on these five petal little flowers, one petal is at the top and that is the one that I fed onto my wire. And then that top petal fits right inside that crystal rondelle spacer. And that component is done and I'm just going to get another simple loop on this end with my one step looper, the same as you saw me do before. And I just do the same thing, just bend my beads out of the jaw of the plier. And then it is ready to attach. Sometimes I'll need to straighten up my loop a little bit, but um, most of the time I get them pretty good. I've practiced with it a lot with that one step looper. And honestly, I have arthritis in my hand. So when I have a long chain to do like this, that tool really saves me from pain later on from that constant twisting <laughs> motion. So I really love it for that. And then let's see what other, oh, I was going to do, show you what I did for this little component. So same thing, start with the one step looper. And then I thread on two of these little AB pink seed beads. One of these little antique copper flower spacer beads and then two more seed beads. You know that I believe in the power of seed beads. They can add that little bit of something like, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you noticed, but I just put one of these little pink seed beads right at the top of that component just to continue alternating my greens and my pinks and it just finishes that off beautifully. Seed beads are small but mighty and I use them a lot in design. And that is a simple little component that I just thought was a sweet little link in my project. I just liked it. So you can see that it appears here. And it just adds a little bit of length and a little bit of something. And again, I was trying to add in a little bit of the darker copper in between my brighter copper. And the last one is just one of these little beads, which is the exact same thing. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Just make the loops and connect, connect, connect. So that is what I'm going to do off camera. I'm going to connect this whole other, make all my, my components and just connect all of my jump rings and turn them into a chain and I'll clean up my mat and come back and we will finish this necklace together, put on the finishing touches. I'll decide where I'm going to add leaves onto the design and what clasp I'm going to use. I really hadn't gotten to that part because this started out to be all about the bird's nest. <laughs> but anyway, these are, this is done. And um, I have two more of these components to make and I'll get everything connected and I will be right back. It will just be a minute for you, a second for you and I'll be right back. <laughs> So I have been working away, making my components and copying my second side of my beaded chain. And so it's looking really good. Let me zoom in a little bit and kind of show you what it's looking like. I just love it. It is so happy and such a spring summer vibe i just love it but i did run out of jump rings to finish so in order to get my other side the length proper <laughs> we will have to make a couple more jump rings let me zoom back out and then while i i was paused i took a little took got up in stretch and i found one of these 
beautiful little toggle clasp that I've used recently on one of my spring bracelets. And these also were from the Beadbox Bargains website. And they're just perfect for the bird's nest, the flowers, the leaves. It's a little flowering vine and the other end of the toggle is a little flower. It's just beautiful. And I have a few jump rings out here for the final connections. And so I'm just going to take another piece of my 20 gauge wire and make some more <laughs> jump rings. Okay, that finishes my last little segment of my handmade beaded chain with my double jump ring on the middle link. And now I'm going to just come down to this end and make sure I have them alike. I did actually did five links on this part just to separate the chain a little bit from my bird's nest. And then I was kind of playing a little bit with the leaves. I have this beautiful little leaf that's embossed on both sides also from the Beadbox Bargains website and I have a couple more of these check glass leaves and I really think I would like to maybe have one down here near this flower and I have this nice little space on my bird's nest I could do one there or on this side um, I'm gonna do like a briolette wrap with another little piece of this 20 gauge wire and then play with the placement. So the way I do this is put the wire in the bead and then I just want to get both of those wires up to the top of the bead and I just use my pliers to make it kind of hug the shape of the top of that leaf bead. So can you see what I did? I'm just grabbing them together and I don't want it to be super long. So I'm going to kind of ignore that second wire and I'm going to do a normal wire wrapped loop here. Just get a hold of that with my, with my pliers. Let me think which way I want my loop to go. I do want to go going front to back and I don't want a really big one. So I'm going to do my 90 degree bend and I'm going to do a wire wrapped loop and wrap right over this shorter piece and then um, cut it away. So just pretend it's not there and do a normal wire wrapped loop. And actually, I can actually trim it away so that it won't be in the way of my wrap. So you can see I can come in the back and just snip it right there and complete my <laughs> complete my my wire wrapped loop and like I said I'm just going to wrap that wire around my cut end and just wrap right down to the top of my leaf a little bit of a messy wrap and just trim that little piece away and I just really love not having a really long stem on my leaf beads that are briolette drilled from side to side because they're just so small and it just looks a little funny to me to have a really long stem. So there's my little leaf and I'm going to take one of these tiny little antique copper jump rings and see how that looks hanging from my nest to give the appearance that we're in a tree <laughs> with this little spring design. That's really cute. So I'm going to connect the rest of my necklace before I decide if I'm going to add any more leaves. I'm going to go ahead and get it connected so that I can back away from filming and see how it looks. And what I decided to do since my chain links that I have made are so large is just attach it directly to the bale that I created. So I'm just going to open this one 
and attach it on this side. Make sure that is closed really well. I have the tendency of putting my pliers on the inside of a jump ring like that and sometimes even going back and just making sure that I hear the click that the two sides are touching each other for a perfect circle. And same thing on this side. Just open this jump ring and come on the other side and add it. I will see. I will see how that hangs. Let me just let me just pull out of the camera for one moment and just hold it out away from my face. <laughs> Oh yeah, I really, really love that. And the little leaf, I apologize for being out of the camera, but the little leaf hangs really nicely when you get it away from your face, get it out from underneath the camera and the light. So let's put our little clasp on, and I think I'm also going to use these tiny little antique copper jump rings. I like the mixture throughout the piece of the antique copper and the bright shiny copper. I think it looks really pretty. And I'm going to do another thing to this piece. I really just love adding the detail of a little dangle to my clasp in the back. So I am going to, I think, I could do another, I have plenty of these little tulips, I could do that, but I really, really like these little embossed leaves, and I think that would be really pretty on another jump ring hanging from this, from this side. So I'm gonna use this little jump ring here and just add a little leaf just for dimension and just that little finishing touch if you were doing a piece like this and you wanted to add an extender chain you know this would be really pretty on the end of an extender chain but i just really like that little that sweet little detail of that little embossed leaf on my clasp and this beautiful bird's nest necklace is done. Now I can add some I can add some things to it. I can add more leaves. I have a couple more of these leaves and I debated about putting another leaf from the bird's nest or even down here. That might be pretty. Um, I I'm gonna think about if I want to add more leaves. I really do like the movement and just the dimensionality of the leaves coming off of the nest and the birds. It's really sweet. I think I would like to add another leaf, but I'm going to wait and it would I would just add it with a little jump ring and you know, I think I'll wait and have a look at how it hangs when I have it on my little mannequin but I really love the way it turned out and I realize that it is quite long and difficult for you to see on this little work mat, but I will get some pictures up at the end so that you can see the finished product. And so now I am going to make a fast pair of earrings to coordinate with this. Here is what this one looks like. I used one of the ball head pins that I have and I just stacked some of the elements that are appearing in my piece. I had two of these beads left over. You see this needs to be closed up a little bit better. There. Um, so I'm just gonna duplicate that really quickly and it is really just threading on beads to a head pin. So the head pin, the eight millimeter Amazonite, this little copper crystal rondel spacer, my little copper spacer, and then I used my one and a half millimeter one step looper. Whoops, that's the three millimeter, wrong one. One and a half millimeter one step looper. 
and just put the head pin through the hole in the back. I just realized how busy this necklace is on my mat, so I hope you can see, but I'm just going to put a simple loop, pull that back, and add it to the bottom of one of my components that was left over from, I don't know if this was left over from this project or the bracelet project that I did, but it was perfect because I had literally two of them left over and, you know, two earrings. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add it to the little ear wires that came in the box. The antique copper ear wires. I happen to love lever back ear wires. And that is the fastest little pair of earrings, but stunning. Simple, stunning. And, you know, this is just the type of thing that you just don't get tired of because it's like classic elegance. I mean, it's just beautiful. I love the Amazonite with the pink. I love that little bit of bling. And this lovely set is completed. So I absolutely will get some pictures at the end of the video and you know, I'll take this in and put it on a little mannequin for you guys so that you can have a really good look at the stunning beaded chain and the very organic and springtime happiness bird's nest. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, it would be lovely for you to do that and tap the bell notification so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And also, I have been asking the community that if your jewelry work table is supervised by any little furry faces, to please send pictures to my email. I'll put it in the description box below so that I can share them with all the community at the end of my videos. I'm trying to do a couple at the end of every video and, you know, the name of your pets and I put your name because if if uh, everyone is reading comments then they sort of get to know everyone who is making jewelry on our channel here so thank you so much for watching i hope everyone is having a great spring and i hope you're safe and well and having fun on your beading mats ciao jewelry making friends